G'day. Welcome to Ollie 35mm, user-based, quasi-empirical, cheap and cheerful videos on Olympus 35mm cameras. Now today I've gone all sci-fi on you. Uh, concept, if you will. Uh, one of two concept cameras that uh, Olympus brought out, uh, the Olympus O product. The other one was the Ecru, which I don't have a... Uh, uh, a um, version of unfortunately i don't have a unit so i won't be able to show you that in the videos but uh, i can show you the o product now this is a a uh, product that came out in 1988 and i think the idea was that uh, olympus just wanted to have a bit of fun with design and did they ever it's a it's a fantastic looking design and uh a bit of fun to use i got quite excited when i managed to get hold of these there's only 20,000 that um, made it uh, out of the production line, 10,000 were for the Japanese market and 10,000 of them were for the international market. This is number 7,280 of 20,000 and it's actually marked on the back as such. I don't know if you can see that in the video or not. It's pretty much a point and shoot. Uh, it doesn't do anything except for point and shoot. It has a an accessory flash um, that is very tedious to take on, uh, take off and uh, put on again. In fact, uh, let's put it on now. Let's screw this little this little cap, which could be easily lost. And you need to do this in a bit of an order. You can't actually put it on and then put this piece on. You have to put this this um, electrical connection on first, and then this little tripody mount screw screws in place automatic flash uh, fires when uh, needed a little bit interesting in the fact that it, uh, it uh, lights up when it's charging and then the light goes off when it is charged runs on two double a size batteries or as you can see here i've got a three volt cr123 in there as well so that's quite handy the fact that you can actually have the two now this won't fire because it's quite light in here so what i'll do is i'll just take it off so i can show you the rest of the camera uh, it has a flash range at iso 100 from 0.65 uh, meters which is the minimum focusing distance of this little fella to 4.5 meters and if you go to 400 iso you will get here we go off you come uh, you will get uh, nine meters out of it or so it tells me anyway just screw this on so we don't lose it uh, it is DX coded, uh, the uh, the film on the inside, I'll show you that in a little while, uh, from ISO 25 through to 1600. Uh, if you're putting on a DX coded film in, I'm not too sure what it resets it to, it doesn't tell me that in the specifications. Okay, there's a little lens cover in there that is taken out of the way by turning this little lever down so it uh, looks uh, very scientific it almost looks like a bank vault or something i think and uh, there's your shutter button there you have two autofocus um, indicators eyes autofocus um, eyes and also the exposure window so you you can get correct exposure you also have your viewfinder hiding there as well little light to to, uh, to tell you when the self timer is running and the self timer can only be fired by pressing in the self timer button on the top and at the same time talking about finicky the shutter button which is a little bit of a pain roughly about a 12 second self timer pretty standard sort of stuff the last couple of seconds it will flash before it takes the photo Okay, 35mm f3.5 lens. I'm guessing it came from the Mu1, but I, I don't really know. I, I couldn't really say. I certainly very very sharp little lens. Um, I was excited to get this O product. I was disappointed when I got it to find that it really didn't do much except for point and shoot. Uh, but then I uh, changed my mind about it when I actually saw the film come back. It is a nice sharp little lens. It uh, focuses very, very accurately. It uh, also exposes very, very accurately as well. So I really have no complaints about the image quality and the results that came out of the camera. But it is not a very nice camera to use. I must admit, I feel like I'm going to drop it all of the time when I have it. Uh, it really worries me. And given the fact that uh, they command quite a reasonable price for what it is, um, I uh, certainly don't want to be dropping it anytime soon. 
Okay, so it says aluminium body, AD 1988, Tokyo, Japan. I can't remember if I've told you it was in 1988, but that's when it came out. And it gives you a little bit of a uh, chat about uh, what it is. A new concept in product design, it says. Olympus O product, functional imperatives moulded to artistic form. There you go. A camera shaped with simple lines and elegant contours. And I can't, you know, can't knock them for that. It certainly uh, is a nice um, looking little camera. Uh, albeit weird uh, the um, what do you call that stuff film that's it I remember film runs from right to left uh, and is is automatically wound in automatically rewound when it gets to the end of the film although there is a rewind button if you need to rewind it halfway through uh, the roll or part way through the roll the uh, batteries uh, it takes two uh, AAA size batteries for the actual camera so you're AAAing everywhere uh, unless you use the CR123 like you saw in, in the flash. And little tripod socket there, and that is pretty much all that you get. A couple of lugs for a funky little strap that you get, which is very uncomfortable to wear. And some a really nice little uh, case uh, that comes with it. It says a product on there, as you can see. And probably the coolest instruction manual I've ever come across uh, beautiful drafting type looking drawings uh, in there and some nice hand-drawn illustrations as to, to tell you how to use the camera so that's uh, the Olympus O product um, as a collector, if you wanted something funky, um, fantastic, they they were at least two hundred dollars, um, and then they work their way up depending on whether their condition and uh, also whether they have boxes and all the original accessories. I do have the strap; I just can't find it at, the, at this point in time for the video. Uh, so. Think very, very um, hard and long about this. Really, if you wanted um, something uh, that that is is like this then go for it but if you wanted a point and shoot camera there's there's a lot better models out there uh, that are a lot cheaper so anyway that's a lot for today thank you very much for listening thank you very much for watching we'll see you next time bye